show and to try and call things. It, it's just it's it's impractical. But but what the what what Google is trying to do is to reform copyright law and to say, well, look, you know, we we have this internet thing. People share stuff. People share things with their friends, and we have to really think about what we do about copyrights in a different way that's actually uh, you know practical and actually is manageable. So, so obviously, in this case, Google is handling really lots of information, and they are in the big. They're 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 obviously a big target more than any video site or any any uh, any site which delivers these search results. So they they would be quite concerned about the situations. Right. Well, just a very quick bit of news here that I can throw in. Um, I think myself and Roy have talked about this. Uh, this piece of software before. Um, Avidi Mux has got a new version out. I don't know, uh, Rusty, if you've had any experience with this package. Um, extremely good uh, movie package uh, for Linux and I believe for Windows as well. And it allows you to edit and uh, rip tracks from a, from a movie file. And it handles a, a plethora of, um, of codecs as well. So, Rusty, have you ever come across Avimux or? Uh, no, I, I actually tend to just use Caden Live or FFmpeg based things, and when, I, I honestly I don't do a lot of ripping these days. Uh, yeah. So I, I, it's it's, I, I do have to I, I have to say I do have program installed the one that's uh, and I'm not as impressed as Steam is. Uh, the first thing I notice about it is it's based on GDK, and I'm just thinking mm, that doesn't look nicely on my <laughs> that looks so nice on my desktop, which is very unfair. And I open those dialogues and I think, mm, it's not worrying my shortcuts. It's I mean, what, what, what I found very good with it, because I don't have much of an interest in, in graphic manipulation or any sort of graphic utilities, and yeah. myself and Roy in the last show had this conversation about my particular um, needs in that respect. But, for example, I've got a couple of videos that I've uh, recorded the family on my on my mobile. I'll throw it into uh, Avid Avedimux, and um, then I can add a add a soundtrack to it or rip out the sound. And it's it's a very simple package and very intuitive to use. Um, there's no messing about. You, you don't you certainly don't need to read any instruction manual or read a, a 400 page booklet on how to uh, on how to use it. So I think it's very good, and it's now in version 2.5.5, which I believe is the latest version, um, available for all. Linux flavors. I um, mean, it is available for Windows, and it's also available for Mac as well. Yeah, the, so, reason uh, I, the reason I installed it was that I needed something very simple to use, because all I wanted to do was crop a video into parts. But as uh, Rusty said, I was pretty pleased that he mentioned FFmpeg. Uh, it's a very scriptable thing, so if you do things repetitively, the last thing you want to do is to start opening things in a, in a GUI and do the, things, the same things over and over again. I, I wrote right. scripts that basically do what I need, and all I have to do is just take the raw file and toss the scripts at them, and that's it. And it's doing really nice things for me. So. No, I, I see, at the end of the day, um, you know, if, it, if it's like you're saying, if it's a one-time simple thing, then something like that works great. If you're doing either multiple files or the same thing, then you, yeah, you want to use the, the script thing. And then if you're getting into more complex stuff, you want to use something a little more robust. But like he's saying, he just wanted to take something off the cell phone and do this one little thing to it. Mm -hmm. Simple as on. He didn't have to really mess with anything other than this little simple thing. It, 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 it honestly just depends what kind of user you are and what you're trying to do. And that's yeah, one of the great things to about it. Yeah, you probably need to have both. And actually, I think lots of the graphical user interfaces, the one I know of, uh, use things underneath which are command line based utilities. So if you get some video editors, it might in fact require you as a prerequisite to have something like FMPEG installed uh, mm -hmm. to do conversions. And, and that's fine. And that actually shows you that the higher level thing is just a uh, intuitive tool for well, you. It, it, at, at its most basic, that really is all Caden Live and. Uh, Open uh, movie and other ones like that are. They're yeah, and also YouTube nice downloaders and YouTube uh, interfaces to kind of access them on a desktop. It's usually based in something underneath too. Um, so, so, so eventually we always use the command line tools, but we just don't see the commands being run in the background uh, to to do all the hard work. We just click buttons. And the buttons themselves construct commands. So if you're talking about GTK Record by Desktop, which is the software myself and team are using to do the video-based show, uh, is just GD is not GTK Record by Desktop. You just really record my desktop, and all the GTK part uh, is basically a nice yeah, wrapper for it. Exactly, it just passes argument. You could actually customize the command from the GUI and say, well, add this thing to the command that you're going to run, 
Uh, but it's a really nice work, and it actually shows you the modularity and the the fact if you get a new version of the same software, you could, without having extra buttons in the GUI, or if you think of very advanced things that shouldn't be in the GUI because they'd be confusing, uh, you can still use them. Well, no, and see, that, that's one of the things that is always used as a, a bash on Linux and now also on BSD, is that it's like, oh, it's too command line based, this stuff's too... Com-. And they're always bringing up something that is not meant to be a GUI application. Like, they're saying FFmpeg isn't a GUI editor. Well, it's, it's not supposed to. It's supposed to be this great, simple, powerful program that if you want a GUI, you build one on top of or download the GUI somebody else has built. Yeah. Exactly. I should put, for example, at the end of this show, and uh, this is something we started about a week ago, what I will do is, is I basically get the, the file, the awk file that's produced from it, and I will just pass it through my script, and it will then uh, take a bunch of files which define the transitions in terms of, like, serve, serve 500, 500 JPEGs, which, which will be the background images, mostly the same one, and it will construct a video with the audio split into parts so that I can actually fit it into... Uh, YouTube, and this is being done with FFmpeg, uh, and the fact that I could a week ago do uh, 450 files like that without doing much manual work is is just showing you I did need the uh, I did need the command line to to do these things. Uh, I couldn't possibly do it with a GUI. It doesn't give you the expressiveness uh, to you know to tell to tell it what to do with video and audio and to actually explain what you sh- it sh- it's supposed to be doing. Well, sticking with the subject of uh, GUIs and command lines, um, here's an article which I discovered a, a very short while ago, and it's uh, it's probably worth a little mention, and it's uh, from the wibbly-wobbly world of BBC Click, and it's uh, headlined, Are Children Becoming Digitally Illiter- Illiterate? Um, the headline says, As computers become more complicated, there are concerns that schools and universities are not teaching the basic programming skills that underpin some of Britain's most successful injuries, uh, industries, and I'm becoming illiterate now myself. Um, I don't know if you want to dis- have any views on this, Roy um, and, and Rusty. It's um, this is coming at an age where, as we're talking about GUIs and people are shifting away from command line, and there's a big sort of uh, fear of using the command line. Whether you believe that today's modern computer is sort of softening the computing experience for new for new users and becoming I think there is a differentiation between users, and if if they want to make more people build companies like ARM. Uh, in Cambridge, then they have to separate between using the computers and actually having a more advanced. I mean, let's say that using a computer is like the course and using your phone. So you know you need to make phone calls and you need to like this is how you text the make a text message and you know uh, very basic common things that you do with the computer, but not actually knowing how a computer works. And the problem is it's very funny the BBC says that because the BBC is educating people to be pretty stupid about these things. And <laughs> yeah, you know, we'll... the articles how they describe the transistor in the computer, it's uh, you just look at it, oh, who, who approved this thing? You know, it, it's really it's really encouraging people not to think. And and the well, well, we have this we have the exact same problem over here. It, it, it's. Uh, at, at the end of the day, I have nothing wrong with computers getting more user-friendly because the more user-friendly they are, the easier they make our life. But at the end of the day, you do need to have an appreciation for the underlying technology. I mean, it's it's the same logic behind, honestly, in your car. You know, you need to understand the... It's a good idea if you understand the basics of how an internal combustion engine works, even if you have no interest in servicing or messing with it yourself, so you can tell if the mechanic's screwing you. Um, <laughs> and it, 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 sorry if I'm speaking ill of anyone who's a mechanic, but at, at, at the end of the day, it, it's, it's a useful skill, even if you're not going to program and you're not going to learn how to do all of this, just so you have an underlying appreciation for what's actually going on there and if it's broke you maybe have a clue what's wrong well, I, th- I think Rusty hits on a, a very valid point here because mm-hmm. I think there's a lot of people in the industry who make money off the ignorance of users now in respect of uh, vehicles like Rusty brought up before the car is a, a beast which if it goes wrong obviously you need the expertise to fix it but of course you need an extra bit of expertise because ultimately it could result in loss of life if you don't fix the thing properly um, with computing it's quite nice to be able to sit down and have a tinker and have a, have a fiddle around I think 
uh, raising the bar of awareness of computing would ultimately uh, result in a lot of people not binning that piece of technology that's running a bit slower than it should and not thinking that they need to replace a laptop because it's uh, it's not loading up their Explorer or Firefox very quickly. So I, th I think it's a good thing. And me and Roy, I think we've had this conversation many times before. Yeah.